Oh, today I'm going to make some cheese. To be exact, I'm going to make a Mexican cheese called queso fresco, or sometimes it's called queso blanco. Queso meaning cheese, fresco meaning fresh, or blanco meaning white. And you can do it in a pot like this, right on the burner. But it's difficult because milk will burn so easily that you just, if you never uh, tried it before, uh, milk will just burn very, very easily. So it's better to use a double boiler like I've got right here. This pot will sit inside of this pot to use the water to heat the milk. And uh, that's what's known as a double boiler, so the milk doesn't get any, any direct heat. It gets the indirect heat from the steam and the water here, from the steam that the water's gonna create. And if you can see there in the corner, I've got uh, eight cups of milk, which is a half gallon. That's going to go right on the top there. See a little tiny bit better that way. Now my, of course I'm going to put a lid on it too. This, this will take a little bit of time uh, for that milk to come up to temp. It needs to come up to 190 degrees Fahrenheit before we can stop that and then go on with the actual uh, curdling process to make the milk curdle and convert it to cheese. To this, this is, this is whole milk. Uh, you probably don't want to use 2%. Some people have said it works okay. Um, if you want to give it a try, that's fine. But I think you'll get better results from whole milk and it, all the milk is going to be pasteurized and that, that's fine, it'll work fine but if you notice labels as ultra pasteurized you probably don't want to use that because it's it may not turn out very good I mean you can still eat it but it just may not uh, firm up properly so just use regular whole milk that's been pasteurized and to this milk I'm going to add one tablespoon of kosher salt you don't want to use table salt that's been iodized. Uh, use, use something like this kosher salt that has not been iodized. So one tablespoon of kosher salt. I'll use a little bit more at the very end, probably. Give a little bit of a mix. This will take a little time, like I say, for this... Uh, milk come up to the right temperature and like I say we're looking for 190 degrees Fahrenheit use a, a good accurate thermometer use a good accurate thermometer that you know is reliable and works properly to check the temperature and uh, this will probably take uh, 15 to 25 minutes or so uh, to get up to temperature so uh, hang on and we'll be back with the next step when this reaches uh, the temperature it needs to be at. If you do decide to go with the single pot method, stir it frequently and use the spatula on the bottom of the bowl, at the bottom of the pot. You'll be able to tell if, it's, if the milk is burning, you'll be able to feel it on the bottom of the pot. If that happens to you, just be very careful and don't scrape it. <laughs> Just gently glide the spatula over the top of that burned area and you'll probably be okay. So, hang on, we're coming up to the next step real fast for you. Once it gets up to 190, it's ready to go, so we'll take it off the heat. Don't forget to every once in a while during the uh, process to give it a little bit of a stir, especially if you're not using a double boiler. And now to this, I'm going to add four tablespoons of just regular white vinegar. 
There's two. And two more for four. You can see it's already starting to curl. Okay, just a little light to stir there, and I'm going to let it rest for about five minutes, and you should be able to see it starting to clump together and separate into the curds and the whey. Here's a closer-up shot. You can see it starting to clump together in the separation occurring between the curds and the whey. Uh, the curds are the clumps that are going to form into the solids cheese and the whey is the liquid that will be left over that we won't use. So about five minutes then we'll be able to transfer it to uh, some cheesecloth to let it drain. And uh, So stick around. <laughs> this is easy stuff and it's going to be finishing up for you in just a second. This is a fine mesh strainer I'm going to use here and I'm going to put one layer of cheesecloth in it to catch the, catch the cheese. Just pretty much like that. I've got a, a bowl on the bottom to catch the excess liquid. And you can see the clumps there, the curds, getting together. And just start ladling it over into the uh, cheesecloth here. Once you pour it all into the cheesecloth here, uh, it's best if you can put it in a some place where it has room below, below it for the excess liquid to drain out. So use a, a deeper pot or a bowl or a bucket or something where this will be suspended. This will take oh, 10 minutes or so probably, maybe a little bit longer. I, bet it, I got me a little bit bigger bowl to uh, make sure that this wasn't touching the bottom while I was draining. And uh, it's been about 10 minutes like that. And there's almost no more liquid draining up. So what I'm going to do now is try to gather all the edges of the cheesecloth together here as best you can. And fold it over. Kind of pull it up snug a little bit. Pull it across from the other side, snug it up, pull the edges up as best you can so that it's kind of a somewhat neat package like that. Then take a take a clean bowl, set it on top of that, and then put something in there that's going to put a little bit of weight on it. There we go, that's about the right way, I think, to help push the rest of that excess liquid out of there. And I'll give that probably another 10 minutes, or again, roughly just approximately 10 more minutes uh, to try to push out the rest of the excess liquid. And then we'll put it in the refrigerator. Uh, it's been another 10, 12 minutes. can see there, I got the last of the uh, excess liquid out of there. Oh, now you can see it really well. So what I need to do now is put it in the refrigerator and to let it firm up. It's still just a tiny bit warm. Tiny bit. Can use two sheets of plastic here. There we go. And wrap this up. 
pull it snug. And then the other side, pull that up pretty snug too. And then on the ends, same thing with those. Pull those together. Pretty snug. Then one more wrap. Now this one, make sure you pull it really snug as well. There. It's got it pretty well tightened up so it'll form a reasonably solid cup. Put it back in this bowl here, that'll keep it from uh, flattening out too much, give it a better shape. Put this in your fridge, give it at least, give it at least uh, two, three hours. I mean, you could eat it right now if you wanted to, perfectly fine. But uh, give it two, three hours, or let it go overnight. Well, it's been about six hours, so take a look at it and see what we got here. There we go, a nice mold of homemade queso fresco. So, th now this is, a <clears throat> this is a pretty mild cheese. So I'm just gonna, you can easily uh, break it off by hand and that's the way it's designed to do is kind of a crumbly uh, very mild uh, fresh cheese uh, it's it's really good on uh, uh, tacos burritos enchiladas uh, on salads on sandwiches uh, whatever you like I'm gonna put some on some crackers here By the way, these are some of my homemade refrigerator pickles on top of the crackers here. And you can try to take a little chunk like that. See the texture of the cheese there if you can. It's just uh, it, it's a reasonably moist. It's a kind of a crumbly texture, and like I say, that's the way uh, queso fresco is. It's just a fresh homemade cheese. Well, there you go, some homemade queso fresco. It's really easy and very tasty. Give it a try. I think you'll like it as much as I do. When I made this, I made it with a minimal quantity of salt. Uh, you may prefer it with a bit more salt in the recipe. Uh, the salt will, will bring out the flavor a little bit more. But if you need to watch your salt intake, you may want to cut back and make it like I did. But either way, give it a try. Make whatever changes you think you might like on it. And uh, enjoy some nice, easy, homemade cheese. See you next time on Cook and Gobble videos.